Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Wong Bing Xuan. Today I'll be talking about how fake news is used as an interactional strategy or a resource in Facebook comments about Taiwan's Gender Equity Education Act. In this study, I reconceptualize fake news from an interactionist perspective by emphasizing its constructive nature and online commenters' attentive role in the process of using fake news to discredit opposing opinions in computer-mediated communication. So what is fake news? Apparently, a lot of people are curious about that in the past few years, and it's no coincidence that according to Google Trends, interest in fake news surged starting in mid-2016 and reached a peak in the beginning of 2017. It's been popularized, but then again, that interest seems to have waned. Here's one definition. But of course, we know that fake news is not just news that is fake. The definition of the term has varied, and as the information ecosystem evolves, the definition can sometimes become insufficient. So some researchers devised a typology for distinction. For example, distinguishing between misinformation and disinformation depending on the intention, the purpose, or the intended audience. Other studies go further to show that the issue of fake news is no longer a simple matter of true or false. It can be used quite famously or notoriously to frame mainstream media as dishonest and untrustworthy. And it has gained saliency as an online expression of emotions. In the same vein, this study highlights how fake news is less a sign of resistance to fact than evidence of ideological contestations. Speaking of fact, what is it? I find that in the research of fake news, fact and fact checking is not only taken as the opposite of fake news, but also often taken for granted. Experiments show how people react to fake news, but that's not really how we experience it. We interact with fake news and with other people. After all, social media is not a one-to-many outlet of information, but a many-to-many -many platform. So when viewed in serious philosophical inquiry into the construction of social reality, the value and function of facts rely on human agreement, for example, money. Sociologist Durkheim points out that uh, social facts are invested with power. Against this background, this study proposes an alternative to the common true versus false treatment of fake news and fact. It adds to the research on fake news by integrating framing in interactional social linguistics, which implies agency and reality construction. A stance is a display of a socially recognized point of view or attitude. Within the discourse analytic approach, a stance is not treated as a psychological state. Rather than something in our heads, it's dialogic to be observed in interaction. So lexical choice and intonation can all be an act of stance taking. Building on the dialogic and intersubjective aspect of stance taking, here's Dubois' model of the stance triangle. A stance taker, subject one, evaluates the sense object, positions the subject, which is the self, and aligns with another stance taker, subject two, either convergently or divergently. When we take a stance toward a certain topic, the present stance can be linked to the stance that comes before, as well as the stance that follows. This results in stance accretion, where stances accumulate to form a larger network of meanings. And it is with this concept that I extend the model of stance triangle and combine it with stance th frame theory. According to Goffman, a frame is the definition of the situation, that is how participants would define and understand the event. This understanding is based on participant alignment, the relationship between them. Tennant and Wallet incorporate this concept into interactional social linguistics to describe what is going on in interaction. To examine how participants negotiate meanings and relationships based on their knowledge of the topic. So as you can see, the alignment dimension is crucial in how we understand and interpret everyday events. When the act of stance taking shifts the way we align with one another, it likewise changes the way we define the situation. A new frame may arise or even two different frames can compete. So back to the stance triangle, which is the upper half of this diagram. Below we see that matching evaluations and positionings 
from similar stances result in convergent alignments that uniformly define a situation. Conversely, opposing stances from counterpositions lead to divergent alignments that divide participants into different teams, each fostering a competing frame. A little background. Here's a brief but not short history of the Gender Equity Education Act in Taiwan. In 1996, a feminist politician was raped and murdered, which prompted the passage of Sexual Assault Prevention Act. This act stated that gender equality education should be taught in primary and high schools. So in 1997, the Ministry of Education established the Gender Equality Education Committee to draft the act. Then in 2000, 15-year-old Ye Yongzhi, who had been bullied for his perceived effeminate behavior, was found dead in a pool of blood in the school bathroom. This incident caught the attention of the committee. And in 2002, the act was redrafted and renamed Gender Equity Education Act to encompass broader conception of gender and sexuality. Finally, in 2004, it went into effect. Then what happened? In 2015, a petition for constitutional interpretation of the marriage chapter of Taiwan's civil code was filed. In 2017, a constitutional court was held, which ruled that the civil code was unconstitutional and that same-sex couples should have the legal rights to marry. Later that same year, the Coalition of Happiness of Our Next Generation, Chong, an organization that promotes the one man, one woman definition of marriage was officially registered. In January 2018, Chum proposed three referendum questions against same sex marriage and a homosexual education, or what we call the Tongzhi education, in the Gender Equity Education Act. The referendum results came out later that year as the victory for Chong. In March 2019, the Ministry of Education amended the Gender Equity Education Act in response to the referendum. Uh, they changed some of the terms, which, was, which were believed to cause confusion and misunderstanding, but Chong was not pleased or satisfied with their moves, uh, thinking that the Ministry of Education didn't remove Tongzhi education from the Gender Equity Education uh, altogether. And, and this is the reason uh, for the incident that we will see in the analysis. Data include Facebook posts and the comments written in reply. And this course analysis was adopted to identify how linguistic resources were used for participants to be engaged in the interpreted work in the constructed accounts of the social activities. Data were analyzed in Mandarin Chinese, but for the presentation, selected excerpts were translated into English. Therefore, a more literal word-for-word -word approach was taken in order to preserve the original wording and phrasing. So the English excerpts you're about to see might sound a little off and not very natural. So on the left, we see uh, Sun Tzu Zhen, member of Chong and a leading proponent of anti-gender equity education referendum proposition, protested against the Ministry of Education. On June 8th, uh, 2019, he claimed that topics including self-performed sex reassignment surgery, orgy, and group sex were taught in junior high school curriculum. On June 14th, Pang Wenzhong, the Minister of Education, posted a response on his official Facebook page, in which he denounced Sun's public statement. With his post, he attached a picture, which you see here, um, of the report filed by the Ministry of Education to National Police Agency. In this presentation, I use Pang Wenzhong's post and the replying comments as an example uh, of this analysis in this study. In the first part of his post, Pan mentions the persons and activities in this incident. These objects serve as schemata or frame elements in his construction. Meanwhile, his language use indicates the relation schema, which can also be seen in his epistemic stance. 
the use of first-person singular pronoun I, 我, establishes the primacy of observation. This is his first-hand account and personal experience. Then through the use of as, 作为, he aligns himself with other educators by positioning himself as one. This invites them to as assume this relational positioning. The relation schemata are used to justify his actions. He presents the lack of choice in his course of action based on causality in these relations. This is where he shifts his self-positioning from an individual reacting to the incident toward an institution taking an action against the rumor maker. The second part of Pan's pose to create a sharp contrast by focusing on the effect of fake news. First, an opposition is made between the rumor makers and the educators. While the former is characterized as malicious, the la latter is again portrayed to be professional, busy with debunking and clarifying. The relations in the previous excerpt are invoked again, only that the relation with the public is now replaced with fear and misunderstanding. Then the first person singular I is replaced with the plural we, woman. Besides the inclusion of his colleagues, he aligns with other educators. This helps with the institutional power imbalance. By positioning himself vis-a-vis -vis the rumors and the rumor maker as the minister of education, Pan demonstrates authority in tackling the problem. In contrast, he positions himself as a fellow educator with reference to the collective hard work to minimize the gap in between. The facts about rumors and fake news are thus established in the maneuver of power that transcends Pan, Pan as an individual and the use of descriptive language constitute this institutional reality. The sense triangle illustrates how the stakeholders in Pan's account are positioned in relation to one another, and this is the foundation on which um, commenters align or disalign with one another to create different definitions of the situation. And below, we see how Pan's account can fit into Edmund's model of framing. Now let's take a look at some of the approving comments. Uh, these comments mirror the stances in Pan's post. First, Pan's self-positioning as an educator and his positive evaluation of the Gender Equity Education Act is seen as his support for educators in service which is shown in their comments, with words like support, backup, and upholding, and protecting. These comments also approve of the Ministry of Education's legal action against Sun and the rumors, as in the negative evaluation of these rumors in Xing's comments, taking reciprocating effective stance by using words like annoying. Finally, Directly mentioning the institution shows that commenters treat Pan's post not just as a personal reaction to the incident, but as the Minister of Education's action against rumors, validating his shift from first-person singular to first-person plural. This agreement in stance-taking and the subsequent formation of frame are illustrated in this figure. The structure within uh, Pan's post is reciprocated in the comments, in the approving comments, revealing what is called frame consistency, where schemata for its different aspects of reality belonging to one and the same frame use similar stance standards. In this way, stance taking provides an insight into how a media frame translates into the individual frames. Commenters recognize the schemata um, which form a frame and respond accordingly as they evaluate the event, position themselves, and align with each other. Stance taking explains the process by which information is negotiated and how it is processed. The characterization or attribution of fake news arises as a result of matched evaluations and shared stances within a frame. Here are some of the opposing comments. First, Min claims that the textbooks approved under the Gender Equity Education do contain inappropriate 
content and that students are exposed to explicit sex education at school. By providing a description, Ming questions Pan's accusation against Sun. This is met with counter arguments from a student and a teacher. May uh, establishes the primacy to knowledge of the gender equity education curriculum through self positioning as a student who has had gender equity education at school, whereas Huang uh, does the same through self positioning as a teacher in service. Both of them take higher epistemic stances by resorting to their status and their first order knowledge. To refute, they ask Min to provide evidence as a way to validate the description. This imbalance of epistemic status factifies some accounts more than the others. Then Zhang's comments incorporates an additional schema. The referendum is used to alter the frame. With a rhetorical question, Zhang suggests that the referendum took place to settle the controversy surrounding the Gender Equity Education Act, thereby questioning Pan's accusation about fake news. A new causal relation is introduced into the frame, and this reframes the issue. That is, it redefines the situation as an issue that has been decided by the majority vote. In response, Chun explains that a referendum was proposed by an anti-gay organization. This stance builds on the previous one, attributing the start of the controversy to the organization and inverts the causal relations. When this happens, Zhang and Ming take similar stances toward the minister, uh, making the same claim that the minister is lying and that the Gender Equity Education Act is inappropriate. Thus, with like-minded stances, between them is a conversion alignment that makes them one performance team. With this team comes the frame in which both the minister and the gender equity education are evaluated negatively, whereas the filthy materials are said to be a fact rather than mere rumors. This framing process is accomplished through different types of alignment and stance taking. So you can see that now by taking different stances and different forming different alignments, we have two different teams on either side um, in the Facebook comments. To conclude, how do we know who's telling the truth? Well, in fact, we don't, and neither is that the problem at a court here. Before dismissing something as untrue, we need to recognize fake news for its social importance uh, because it plays a part in what aligns with one's beliefs, especially in the context of social media. This could explain why, um, instead of disregarding facts, commenters do believe their version of the events to be factual. Um, Meanwhile, they tend to welcome versions of these events whose construction aligns with their existing stances. Second, the integrated framework aims to complement quantitative and experimental uh, studies. The stance triangle, first, helps to visualize the transposition of schemata uh, from the media frame to the individual frames. Second, uh, it demonstrates framing as a vehicle for the social construction of the real. So fake news is more of an issue about claiming authority and establishing primacy than it is about figuring out the facticity or accuracy of a set event. I'll end my presentation here with the idea that research on fake news can move beyond truth or false dichotomy and account for the interactional nuances in online comments. Thank you very much.